I'm Georgine. And I'm Heather. And we're going to look at healthy eating and why it's important. We will look at the Eat Well plate and the eight tips for eating well to find out how we can achieve a healthy, varied diet. First, let's get some ideas on what healthy eating might be about. Include different foods in your diet. Whole grain foods and whole grain meals to get more fibre. Eat less salt. Grill, don't fry foods. Um, just eat in a wide variety of foods by getting the right amount of vitamins and minerals. Uh, not eating the same foods all the time. Uh, eating lots of fruit and veg. Yeah, and having your five a day in that. I eat less fat. And you eat your five a day, uh, which is fruit and vegetables, and you do lots of exercise, like football, sports, rugby, stuff like that. Eat less sugar and eat less saturated fat. Did you get all that? A healthy diet is one which is varied and balanced over time, providing all the nutrients our bodies need to remain healthy. So we don't have to give up the foods that are a real treat. The key message is that it is the overall balance of foods that is important for our health. So, how can we eat healthily? This is the Eat Well plate. It's the UK model used to describe a healthy, varied diet. It shows the types and proportions of foods we need. This includes everything we eat during the day, including snacks. The Eat Well plate is suitable for most healthy people, including people of all ethnic origins, people who are overweight and people following a vegetarian diet. It is not suitable for children under two years of age because they have different needs. Anyone with special dietary needs should check with a health professional to make sure it is suitable for them. We do not need to achieve the balance at every meal, but achieve it over time. Let's have a look at the five food groups on the Eat Well plate. This is the fruit and vegetables group. Fruit and vegetables should make up one third of the food we eat. Try to have different types each day. We all need to eat at least five portions per day as they provide us with lots of vitamins and minerals as well as dietary fibre. Did you know that each of these counts as one portion of fruit? An apple, an orange or a banana, as well as these chopped fruits like a slice of melon, two plums, two satsumas or a handful of berries or three dried apricots. For vegetables, we could have a handful of vegetable sticks, three heaped tablespoons of cooked vegetables or a small bowl of salad. All varieties of fresh, frozen, canned or dried fruit and vegetables will count towards our five a day. Pulses, such as baked beans, count towards your five a day. About three heaped tablespoons counts as one portion, no matter how much more we eat in a day. Even fruit juice counts, but remember, only 150 millilitres counts as one portion, no matter how much more you drink in a day, because it doesn't have a high fibre content. Fruit smoothies, which contain at least 150 millilitres of fruit juice and 80 grams of crushed fruit, count as two portions. And remember that potatoes do not count as one of our five a day because they are in the starchy foods group. How can we achieve this? I choose fruit and chopped vegetables as a snack. Uh, I like soup, vegetable soup and that. This is the bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and other starchy foods group. These foods should also make up a third of our diet. We should aim to include at least one food from this group in each meal. These foods are an important source of carbohydrate, which provide us with energy. They also provide B vitamins, some minerals and dietary fibre. Try to go for whole grain varieties to increase your dietary fibre intake. Dietary fibre is important to keep the gut healthy. How can we achieve this? Eating whole grain breakfast cereals is nice and easy. I try to use whole grain or wholemeal bread for my sandwiches. I like rice or naan bread with my curry. This is the milk and dairy foods group. We should eat moderate amounts of these foods and opt for lower fat versions where possible. Milk and dairy foods are a good source of protein and vitamins A and B12. They are also an important source of calcium, which helps to keep our bones strong and healthy. Some ideas are a glass of milk, you could choose semi-skimmed or skimmed, a pot of yogurt or a small piece of cheese. How can we achieve this? I eat a cheese and tomato sandwich. I like lactose-free milk on my cereal. 
This is the meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy sources of protein group. We should also eat moderate amounts of these foods and choose the lower fat versions where we can. These foods are a good source of protein and also provide other vitamins and minerals such as B vitamins, iron and zinc. Red meat is an especially good source of these minerals. Iron is important for healthy blood, but if we don't eat meat, we can also get iron from other foods such as eggs, pulses, green leafy vegetables and fortified breakfast cereals. Remember, it is important to try and eat two portions of fish each week and one of these should be oily, for example mackerel or salmon. They are rich in a certain type of fat called omega-3 fatty acids, which can help to keep our hearts healthy. How can we achieve this? I'm a vegetarian, so I go for different kinds of beans and lentils. I take the skin off my chicken before I cook it. The smallest group is foods and drinks high in fat and on sugar. These foods should only be eaten occasionally and in small amounts. Reading food labels can help you choose wisely from this food group and from all other food groups too. How can we achieve this? I don't eat these very often. Uh, from a Saturday morning breakfast, I poach my eggs and grill my bacon. So, how do we put all this into practice? Well, here's the Food Standards Agency's eight practical tips to help us eat well. We have asked other nutrition scientists at the BNF to provide us with some helpful suggestions for each tip. Tip one, base your meals on starchy foods like bread, cereals, rice, pasta and potatoes. Include a starchy food with each meal. They're a good source of energy as well as other important nutrients. Tip two, eat lots of fruit and veg. Many people know this, but most of us still aren't eating enough, so remember to eat your five a day. Try fruit on your breakfast cereal or corn on the cob with a meal or even a veggie stir fry. Tip three, eat more fish. We should try to eat two portions of fish a week, including one portion of oily fish. Try to be creative when you're cooking fish, using different types of fish. Why not try steaming, grilling or microwaving fish rather than frying it? Tip 4. Cut down on saturated fat and sugar. Where fat and sugar is needed in cooking, use it sparingly. Tip 5. Try to eat less salt. We should eat no more than 6 grams of salt a day for everyone aged 11 years and over. There are lots of low salt options available, so check the labels to make the smart choice. Tip 6. Get active and try to be a healthy weight. Being overweight can lead to health conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes or heart disease. And being underweight can also affect our health. So why not try to incorporate a walk or some sports at lunchtime with your friends? Tip 7. Drink plenty of water. Drink about 6 to 8 glasses of water or other fluids each day. We need more if the weather is hot or if we're active. Fluids such as water, tea, soft drinks, fruit juice and even coffee all count towards our fluid intake. Tip 8. Don't skip breakfast. If you're pushed for time, try something easy like a fruit smoothie or a piece of fruit. Eating a healthy, varied diet can help us to look and feel our best. In the long term, it can help prevent diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis and other health problems developing throughout life. Research shows that young people have diets that are often lacking in certain micronutrients like iron, calcium, magnesium and some B vitamins. Over time, these deficiencies can lead to health problems. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about eating healthily, log on to our website nutrition.org.uk or foodaffectoflife.org.uk. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.